half Muslim and half uh, Chinese and uh, others. Only one country which has a substantial portion of its exports that are related to high tech or to, to uh, uh, manufactured goods. Um, you see that uh, Pakistan is 1%, Saudi Arabia nothing, Iran is 2% and so forth. In contrast, you see that uh, countries like India, well, India is, is doing, uh, this does not include software. Software, if one includes, then India goes still further up. This is China, Germany, USA, and so forth. Again, this points to my earlier assertion that uh, we're not finding very much science among us. Well, there's a third metric that one could possibly use, and that's the size of higher education, the size and the quality of higher education. That again is not terribly easy to judge, but if you look at the top 1,000 universities as uh, judged by uh, the, the Chinese institution which does that, as well as the uh, Institute for Higher Education, and you see that there are only two Muslim universities in the Muslim world. One being in Turkey, the other in Malaysia, which come in the first thousand. My fourth metric, and this is um, again something that one can have only a qualitative opinion on. That metric is the extent to which science is present or absent in popular culture. In every society, one has a way of thinking that, that deviates substantially from rationality, from science, from logic and so forth. But nevertheless, science does play a considerable part in that society's collective forms. Let me relate to you some personal experiences in, in, in this regard. <coughs> well, one of my first experiences upon <coughs> returning to Pakistan, this was 1973, I had just uh, finished my undergraduate degree at MIT, returned to Pakistan and started teaching. At, the, at Islamabad University, as it was known at that time. The department I joined was headed by a chairman who uh, had announced a scientific discovery. That discovery was the speed at which heaven is receding from earth. And he calculated that speed as being one centimeter per second less than the speed of light. His logic was based upon Einstein's theory of relativity. <laughs> and he said that praying on the night of Laylatul Qadr, that's the day, that's the night when, when the Quran was revealed. And according to the Quran, that night of prayer is worth 1,000 nights of ordinary prayer. So he took 1,000 as the factor and used it in the famous Einstein time dilation formula, which is one over square root of one minus b squared over c squared and hey presto he got the result that heaven is receding from us at one centimeter per second less than the speed of light. Now I thought that was a little odd <laughs> but then I didn't know that I, 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 I had no idea of uh, where I had landed up. It turned out that it wasn't just my department but that there was a wave that was running through the country and that wave crested at the time when General Ziaul seized power in 1977 and in 1970, following 1979 there was an Islamic science conference every few weeks and the results presented in that were actually quite mind-blowing. Like, for example, not only was this research presented, I mean, the speed of heaven, but also you had calculations of the degree of munafiqat. 
is the hypocrisy. Based upon Coulomb's law. <laughs> right? It is at that time I encountered a man who is now rather famous, Sultan Bashiruddin Mahmud. He was at that time a director of the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. And he had just uh, formulated his his theory, his, 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 his ideas of how to solve Pakistan's energy problems. He said, look, when God made man, he made him out of clay. When God made jinns, he made them out of fire. And what is fire but energy? So, if you could only go and capture those jinns, then you would solve Pakistan's energy problem. <laughs> this man became subsequently very famous uh, when he met with Osama bin Laden just before 9-11. But at that time, he and I were uh, well, uh, not on very good terms because I had said that, uh, sorry, this, uh, you're not going to be able to capture the jinns after all. Um, they're supposed to be out of the reach of man. But anyway. So I um, was raising this fourth point because it's very important that science be part of culture, or at least popular culture be such that it does not go against what science holds to be essential, fundamental. Every so often, I'd say every couple of weeks, I get an email from some student in Pakistan or some other person, I don't know who he or she is, but typically the, the, the questions will be, uh, sir, I saw your program on television, and you have uh, said this, this, and that, and so I'm intrigued. So I want to ask you a question: Is it not true that our holy prophet split the moon in two, and then the moon joined up again, and that you can see a line that goes through? Or how do you, as a physicist, explain that? The Prophet went on the mirage, the ascension to heaven, and then when he came back, the chain at the door was still swinging. Is, isn't this explained by the theory of relativity? Or I would get a question like, uh, I have just read on the internet that in the Quran, the speed of light has been calculated to absolutely the right value. Is this correct? Can you please explain? Now, this is the sort of question that I get day in and day out. This is a consequence of the kind of education that our students have received in our schools for now a very long time. This is, it's now practically 25 years since General Ziaul Haq, after he seized power, changed the curriculum in our schools. He said everything must be Islamicized, including the teaching of science. And thereafter there was an enormous effort that was, that was made by the ideologues in our society, by the jamaat e islami in particular, to change science textbooks. So for example, <coughs> One of, the one of the recommendations of uh, the think tank Institute for Policy Studies run by the Jamaat Islami was that one should completely redo the teaching of science and eliminate the connection between cause and effect which is presented in Western secular science 